Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In this video, I'm going to take you through the client portal as your clients will see it. We often get asked, what can the client see? What can't they see? What does it look like? We want to be able to help our clients when they're using the portal. So this video is going to be ideal to answer all of those questions for you. So let's roll the credits and have a look at what your clients can see in their portal. Okay, so welcome to the Client Portal home screen. What you're about to see is everything your client's gonna see every time they log in. So first of all, what can we see on the screen? Well, we've got the My Practice logo here. Remember, this is all linked to our demo account where we've got, where we've got the My Practice logo sat there as well. If you've added your logo to your settings in your Client Engager, then it'll be your logo that appears here. We've then got the Welcome to Client Portal followed by their login details, which they're going to have created when you've first invited them to this portal. So let's log in. So here we are, we're logged into our client portal. What can the client see? Well, first of all, they can see your nice big logo on the top left here. This banner along here, which is currently in like a dark blue purpley color, that would be in the color of your primary choice of your logo, as it is on all your documents in Client Engager. Your client will then see their name and their login email. They can click on here, they can change a password, they can turn on two-factor authentication from here. This is going to work in the same way two-factor authentication works for you and your users in your firm. And there's a whole different video on using two-factor authentication in Client Engager on our YouTube channel. So if you want to know more about turning it on and how that works, have a quick watch of that. Your client can also choose to log out from here as well. You've then got the name of the individual and their details. Here, they can update their email address, their phone number, they can add a phone number if they've not got one already. And all they do to do that is to click on the pencil and they can edit it like that and click save. And once you've clicked save, that will actually update the details in Client Engager that you can see on the client info screen. So I'm just gonna change that back. Your client can also then choose which marketing preferences they do and don't want to be contacted by. And then they'll also see the same reoccurrence here of Client Engager Online Limited. Then they'll get client details, files, and signing requests for every business that they're related to in Client Engager. So let's go to client details. Here we can see the services this client is receiving for this business. You can see the fees and the frequency of charging for those fees is listed here, but you can turn that off in your settings in Client Engager if you want to. We can then go into the folders and the client can see all the folders that we've given them the right to see. And they can also see if they've got the read and upload right, or if it's just a read only folder. So if we can click into accounts, click into 2021 or 2022, and you can see, they can see the accounts are up here, look. They can either download or they can preview it. If we preview it, we can see the PDF. If we download it, it will just download. So your clients will have access to all their folders and their documents at all times. So that's really good for clients that want to go, actually, where are my accounts? Can I get a copy of my accounts? You can just say, yep, they're in your client portal. The other thing they can do from here is to sign their documents. So we can see we've got six signing requests here. So the first one is self-employed accounts. It was requested on the 8th of February at 11.37 and it was requested, and there was a description put onto it as well. So once the client's clicked sign or reject, this is what happens. This pops up, we get a PDF viewer, so we can go through and we can see all the PDFs nice and easily. We can see the accounts that our client needs to sign off. They then get two options. They can either sign by typing in their full name and they can leave a comment, or they can reject the document. Now by rejecting it, what they're saying is something's not right and they have to then put a reason in. Once they've confirmed the rejection, you're gonna get a notification in your client engager saying the client's rejected it and this is why. Also, if they signed it, they can go in, sign their name, 
and confirm. Again, you're gonna get a notification to say that that's it, they've signed that. So, as you can see, once the client's rejected or signed a document, here's what happens. This document is now signed. They can now view the signed document, which has got the signature cover sheet now generated on top of the document that was signed. And they can download that, they can print it, they can do what they need to do with it. This one was rejected, and you can now view the original document again, and they can download it if they wanted to. And you'll also see the number of documents requiring signing has reduced. Any documents that have ever been requested to be signed can be seen here, and you can see which ones are pending. You can filter by signed, and filtered by rejected, and all statuses. Portal so is, is very functional. It gives them access to all their folders, all their files. They can go in anytime and get those. They can sign, reject documents. They can update some of their contact details. Okay, so there we have the client portal for, that we use in Client Engager. You've now seen what a client portal looks like from your client's perspective. Some of the functionality we're actually going to be working on in the coming months, and we're hoping to do a big revamp project of the client portal in summer this year, are things like we're going to be able to send forms to clients and get them to fill those in on the client portal so they can collect information for things like tax returns. Clients will be able to add and update more of their personal details in Client Engager's portal in the summer, so they're going to be able to add their address, add tax reference numbers, answer questions that you ask them, on top of the current ability for e-signing, file storage, document uploading and downloading. If you've got any ideas of what you'd love for our client portal to have as features, please let us know so we can build it into the scope of our project for this summer. Hope you enjoyed looking through the client portal in the same way the client would, and I'll talk to you all very soon.